here we have an existing Inventor LT DWG file as we left it at the end of our last session. And what we want to do now is go ahead and finish up the DWG file in the manner of annotations and dimensions and the likes. As we're going through, you'll see that Inventor LT's Drawing Manager has a lot of tools available to the end user to help automate a lot of these tasks. So here we're going to add some dimensions like the chamfer dimensions, some chain dimensions, and then we're going to add some additional annotations. Things like hole callouts and, and things of that nature. So you can see that the tools available in the annotate tab in the ribbon toolbar allow us to automate a lot of this, but we can also bring in dimensions from that 3D parametric model. Again, automatically here we can select or deselect any dimension that we feel is appropriate to a specific view and automatically bring those into the model. Once we position those and clean them up essentially, we can create any additional dimensions in any other views that we see necessary. So here we'll just add a couple more dimensions and then take a look at our drawing and see what more needs to be added. So if there's any more detailing that needs to be done, any more dimensions, of course tolerancing and GDT can be added at this time as well. We'll just finalize this drawing with uh, a few last details. In this case, maybe uh, one more dimension to let people know that that's centered. Well, now we want to start talking about how do we get this to the, the greater world? How do we communicate this design um, with our vendors, our suppliers, or even internally with non-CAD users? And that's where Autodesk Design Review comes in. So inside of Inventor LT, we can go ahead and publish a DWF file. We're going to publish the 2D file, DWG file, along with the Inventor IPT, or the model. So what this does is creates a viewable file that people can view in Autodesk Design Review or in Windows um, Internet Explorer 7 or higher. So the end user doesn't have to be a CAD user, and not only can they view this file, but now they can mark it up. So they're not messing with your DWG or your CAD data directly, but they're able to view kind of a WYSIWYG of whatever you publish at the time, and they're able to mark it up and redline it for approval or rejection. So think of it as a PDF on steroids. So now we're able to take these files and have the uh, customer, supplier, vendor, whoever, the non-CAD user, review this document. They don't like some of the holes. Um, and they feel they need a better description of how those holes are spaced out. So they're letting us know um, with annotations what they want. And then of course from here they can either approve or reject this design with some of our predefined stamps. So if I'm the person that's rejecting this, I'm going to grab the rejected stamp. And not only am I going to put it on the drawing, I'm going to make it nice and big and rotate it and make it kind of obtrusive so people really get the idea that I'm rejecting this drawing. Now the beauty of rejecting this now is that I can save this DWF file as a markup file. So I'm going to give it a different name um, and send this back to the designer or the CAD user using Inventor LT Suite and let him know what changes I'm requesting. So here I am back inside of Inventor LT and I can simply open up that DWF file, that markup document and I can overlay it on top of my DWG file. So now that design communication is in one location. You'll see over my browser I actually have little highlights or notes of what things or changes they're requesting. So they want different hole sizes. Well we're in a 3D modeling environment. I simply go back to my hole tool. I choose the M5 hole that was requested. Hit OK because it's part of a parametric pattern. Each of those children instances of the holes update automatically. We go back to the Inventor DWG file, it's fully associative, it's automatically updated that whole callout to an M5. So that change has been done. But now we want to communicate what is the spacing on those holes. So I obviously left out a dimension. Let's not only place in that 120 degree dimension, let's add a little note in there just uh, for additional clarification to let people know that they're equally spaced at 120 degrees. So we've made the two changes. Um, I can go over my browser now and I can mark off or check off that yes, that change has been done. On um, the rejected, I can't necessarily unreject it, but I can mark it for review. At this point, I can save the markup file and send it back to the customer, or I can publish another DWF file. Uh, personally, I'll close off the markup file and I'm going to send them a new DWF file. I want them to have a fresh uh, drawing to look at for approval or rejection. So as I send this back, to the original person for review, they're going to see that I've made the changes. I've added some space in callouts. I've updated the uh, whole callout to be the M5. 
search for any uh, additional things that I might want to critique. There's nothing I can find. So I want to go ahead and use that predefined stamp this time and approve this drawing. So now what we've seen is that we can take in session one a DWG file, bring that into the Inventor LT environment, make a 3D part off of it, and an Inventor DWG file. But now we can round trip that and mark it up using Design Review.